Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live, um, the first Encompass Live of 2013. Um, I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover um, any activities that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. Um, we do these shows live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are recorded, so if you aren't able to join us um, during on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always watch all of our recordings. Um, we are now in our um, beginning of our, this is the beginning of our fifth year. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we started in January 2009 with this. So you can watch our all four years previous of recordings if you want to on our website. Um, we do bring in um, guest speakers to do presentations um, here on the show, but we also do things um, f with just our own staff, and that's what we've got this morning. Um, I am myself and Michael Sauer sitting next to me, who is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Library Commission. Um, we are your uh, presenters this morning, and we are going to be talking to you about a program we've been doing here through the Library Commission since, when did we start, 2008? The first time? I think so. No, no, no. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> in a slide in here somewhere. Let's in the notes, yes. Um, so what we're talking about here this morning is 23 Things, um, the next generation of 23 Things programs. Now, I know that um, I've done this presentation, we've done this presentation for a couple of years now in various incarnations um, at various conferences or online, and um, some people have been through these kind of programs. We know that some of you have done them. Some of you have... Uh, been through it yourself or seen or read about other people, um, other organizations doing it. But I know also from these presentations we've done that many people don't have a clue, have not heard of them yet. It's new to them. There's always something that's new to somebody, you know that. Um, or that some people might not just want a refresher on what they were, what they're all about, um, how maybe you can get one of these programs going in um, your organization. So we're going to give you a little, um, some background on where they all started, where these 23 Things programs came from, and then um, get into what we're doing, what we've been doing here, and some other ones going on um, mm -hmm. across the country and uh, in other areas of the world, actually. It's not just us. Um, <laughs> oh, no. So, so the basics here um, about uh, new technologies. The reason these 23 Things programs, which we'll get into the details of in a second, um, problem with all these new technologies is there's so many of them. There's new things coming out every day, new technologies, new resources, new tools you can use, and some people may think that they are missing the train or getting hit by the train um, in some cases. <laughs> um, hopefully that's not the case, but sometimes there's just too many things to keep up with. You don't know what is the newest thing. How am I supposed to learn this? Um, and is this something new that I've got to keep up with now and something new I've got to do in my job, something extra? Honestly, it's not. Um, just have to keep in mind, this is a part of lifelong learning. That's another phrase you hear a lot related to um, 23 Things programs. We're always learning new things um, in our personal life, in our professional life. It's not, you just don't really sometimes think about it as I am learning something. I need to take a class on something. I have to teach myself something. You're always learning something new. As Michelangelo said when he was at age 87 in 1562, he, I am still learning. So there's always new things coming up that you'll learn about. And this is just another part of that. It's good. You just need to make it um, something that you do, part of your life. Um, and these programs can help. Uh, for example, here is, this isn't necessarily a 23 Things program, just an example of doing um, lifelong learning. This is at the Tacoma Park, Maryland Library. They actually specifically have a senior room. For, there's computer stations where the minimum age to use them is 55. And they are full constantly. Um, and many people use them are much older. You can see everyone here is um, older <laughs> in this photo of the people using it. So this is just an ongoing thing that your patrons, your users, um, your students, faculty, whoever are your users at your libraries and institutions are, they are um, doing this as well. So people are always trying to learn. You need to learn. Your users are going to be trying to learn these things. What can you do? With a structured program, that we can use to help our staff, students, colleagues, whoever, um, keep up of and keep up with and be aware of all these new technologies and resources. So that's kind of a background of this whole lifelong learning idea and what is going on. And um, hopefully, with 23 Things, um, these types of programs um, can help people keep up better and be less stressed about it. Now, I want to know uh, if that guy in the back of the 
photo there is either watching a funny cat video or knows he's being photographed. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yes, he, but he is enjoying whatever he is doing there, definitely. <laughs> um, so what is um, 23 Things? Um, the original 23 Things program, or Learning 2.0, uh, we've got a screenshot here, was originally designed by uh, Helen Blowers at the Public Li Library of Charlotte Mecklenburg County. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah, they now hey, call it the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library. Library. The they name has changed. changed since this was done, yes. But it, um, yeah. And she read an article by Stephen Abram, who many of you may uh, be familiar with, and uh, if you're not, you probably should be. Uh, he wrote a blog post called uh, 43 Things I or You Might Want to Do This Year, and that was back in 2006, I believe, something like that, or, or maybe even 2005. Yes, 2006. 2006. Basically, it was one of those, uh, you know, it's the new year, what, what might you want to be looking at? And she looked at that article and thought, oh, you know, this is a, a really great thing. It, it pointed to a 43things.com website. And she said, okay, but 43 might be a little much. So she turned it around and, and kind of chopped it down to 23 things uh, and created a program for her uh, staff, for the staff at the library, not her staff per se. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that was a nine-week program and basically broke down things into lessons or, well, each – each item into a thing, um, which was its own lesson, and uh, you would read about it, things would come out, you would do a little exercise based on whatever tool that was, and um, finish that up. I think they have things like prizes uh, and things like mm -hmm. that at the end to kind of encourage participation uh, from the librarians uh, at, on that staff. So this was kind of the, the very first program uh, using this format. And one of the things that they... Um, worked into this that she kind of put together was this seven and a half habits of highly successful lifelong learners. Now was this, Helen put this together or she found this? Um, I think she they, found I'm not sure it says that she came up with it. But oh, okay, um, okay. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give Helen the credit. I'm, I'm sure I'm there's sure research about this. lifelong learning that went oh, into definitely. it and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And so in putting together this program, she kind of took these seven things, begin with end in the mind, uh, accept responsibility for your own learning, view problems as challenges, I, I try to live by that one as much as I can, uh, have confidence in yourself, create your own toolbox of learning, um, use technology to your advantage, teach and mentor others, and that, that 7.5 there, 7.5 is play. Um, as you look at these programs, especially that last one, uh, I, I like to say, they really kind of pull all of these things together, and, and even in our program that we're doing, we have people watch a little video about these seven and a half mm -hmm. habits to try to get the participants to in, internalize these things as they're going through the program itself. I had someone ask me once when I did this presentation uh, last year sometime, why is the last, why is play seven and a half? I think it should be a full, the full <laughs> eight. It should be a full one on its own. I'm like, well, this is just how they call well, it. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, and I think I, I'll try to say. Just um, play, explore. Well, and it's, it's, it's playing upon these seven habits of highly effective people. Mm. See, I think. Yes. Uh, so, okay. so if you change it to eight, you know, then it, yeah. it kind of loses so the attachment. Extra. But, uh, mm -hmm. it will, next time we see Helen, we'll have to ask her. <laughs> Why, why she didn't give play a full full point. <laughs> um, so we heard about these programs, and uh, Chris and I kind of got together here at the commission and said, hey, you know, I think we should probably do some sort of program like this. So where would we start? We decided to start with our staff, because putting together one of these programs is um, a bit much. So back in uh, 2008, from February through April of 2008, mm -hmm. We ran our own Learning 2.0, 23 Things program here for the staff. Our, they were our guinea pigs. Yes, yes. <laughs> we did think about doing this for you know, our point. We did want to somehow get this out to librarians and library staff in the state, but we didn't weren't comfortable jumping right into that to begin with. Let's try something to see how this works. Can we even pull it off? Mm -hmm. How does it actually work in in pro in the in and, and scale. process? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the original program we heard was for a library staff. Mm -hmm. How do you scale it up to you know a whole state? Yeah. So we said, let's start with our staff, see what works, see what doesn't work. Can we write you know good instructions that people can understand? Have we chosen the right tools? Uh, most of these programs you see are licensed under some sort of Creative Commons license, so you are free to borrow and reuse and modify. Mm -hmm. So we did not write our own from scratch. We took the original Charlotte Mecklenburg one and kind of adjusted it. Mm -hmm. I think we included at least one or two Nebraska-specific resources that, that they wouldn't have ever included. 
uh, and things like that. So we ran this program over nine weeks. This program is still uh, archived online if you ever at some point want to go back to it. When we show you the current site, there, I believe there's links back to the original. Um, participation on staff was voluntary. Uh, we have we had at the time 49 people on staff. I'm going to throw some numbers at you now. Um, 25 people started, so that was a 50% a participation rate, and nine people completed, which was a 36% completion rate. Now, these mumpers may not sound great, but really they are. Um, well, 36%. When you think of just that, that's good. Yes, I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're getting 36% of the people who started to actually finish one of these projects. That's if you look at other people who maybe have done research and anyone who's done this, they'll say, oh, my God, you got that many to do yeah. it. <laughs> well, and it is work. I mean, yeah. they, they had to set aside time each week, mm -hmm. each week from their regular job to read the, read the post, investigate, play with the mm -hmm. system, come up with some sort of end product, write a blog post about their experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does take some time. And we did make sure that this was um, vetted all through the um, supervisors and mm -hmm. the heads of the departments. So they were involved as well in doing it and participating themselves as much as they can and encouraging and giving their staff the time to do it. So getting management on board um, and invested in it made a difference. Yeah, well. Kristen and I just didn't put this together and said, okay, everybody, yeah. you want to do this? No, we, I mean, yeah. top down, everybody, you know, had to have some buy-in. Yeah. Um, ran for nine weeks. It uh, was self-reporting. We kind of checked off when people did things, but but that was about it there. Um, everybody who completed was entered into a prize, which were, were um, provided by staff, uh, purchased some prizes, some of the management purchased prizes. We weren't using any tax money for no, that. They used um, personal money to yeah. purchase the... And there was uh, some uh, MP MP3 players were, were, were the prizes there. And then on April 15th of 2008, on Library Worker Appreciation Day, we kind of held a little... Um, finale and uh, we, we had a little party anyways but we can attach this to it uh, drew for prizes got people's feedback and overall um, it, it success I would we say did we, we did it <laughs> um, and we didn't look at it and go oh we're never doing this again in yeah. fact we've been doing it ever since so yeah. what we then did with that information was that fall we opened it up to the state of Nebraska so this is kind of version 2.0 of Nebraska Learns 2.0, mm -hmm. um, or actually it's version 1 of Nebraska Learns 2.0 yeah. because the other one was just for staff. Yes. Um, and so that ran from October of 2008 through January of 2009, which um, upon reflection may not have been the best time to run it. Um, in fall we had state conference, um, mm -hmm. you have the holidays coming up mm -hmm. there, but I mean it, it worked. It worked. But I, maybe if I was going to well, do it again, October to January might might not have been in the best time to choose. For the state conference, we were able to use that to help promote it. True. In the first yes. place, we were able to push it at our mm -hmm. October conference where we handed out business cards that talked about 23 things. 16 weeks, you can, um, you can earn 15 CE credits. Yes. So mm -hmm. we did have uh, some MP3 player giveaways that were purchased by... Um, uh, ITART, which is uh, the Technology Roundtable for, uh, of NLA, and NEMA, which is now ENSLA, the School Librarians uh, Group, um, and, and our and NLA themselves. So we kind of got like three MP3 players from each, I believe. We had nine to give out. Um, and then if you completed it, now it's an all or nothing. You didn't get like one CE credit per thing. If you completed the whole program, you got 15 CE credits. Now, not to get into too much detail about how CE works here in Nebraska, but that was about three years worth of CE credit. I mean, it you, could be, yeah. you, you, could, you could do this program and get your accreditation for a couple of years covered right right from here. So that was a – the the MP3 players were nice, but I think the CE credit really pushed a lot of people into participating. We, we included in our continuing education coordinator in the planning for this mm -hmm. so that she was on board as well with doing it. So, throwing a few more numbers at you, we uh, had 165 participants across the state of Nebraska. Um, they wrote a total of over 2,300 blog posts as a result of this. Uh, there were over 2,200 comments left back on this uh, blog here that was running the program itself. Um, the four staff that were running the program, me, Krista, Lana, and Susan, sent over about 350 emails back and forth. We kind of counted running how, many, the program. how many emails just during that, that A lot of coordination among the people needing to put on the program. And we had 83 completions. So out of 165, we had a 50% completion rate. That is amazing. Yeah. Everybody um, we've talked to who's run one of these programs has just said, how the heck did you get a 50% completion rate? 
um, we think it was the CE credit. <laughs> I mean, it really was um, because that draws them in. Yeah, you know, some some folks have a harder time earning that CE credit by doing things, mm -hmm. and they went, "Hey, here's a program. I can do this. It's a limited time period. I can just get it done and get all that CE." And it was wonderful. Uh, we did a uh, wrap-up program on Encompass Live, which back in 2009, which I'm sure is still out is, in, yes. in the archive. <laughs> Yeah, we drew our prizes from that, uh, from that and got a lot of great feedback from people. So, so mm -hmm. stage one was staff, stage two was um, the state, mm -hmm. and one of the biggest comments that we got in the end uh, from the final post, we asked people to kind of say, okay, what do you think of the program? Reflect, we'll, on, reflect on it, whatever. And the single greatest comment we got was, or the single most often comment we got was, is keep it going. Are you going to do it again? Are you going to do more? They're sad that it was ending. Yeah. That they weren't going to have any more um, lessons to learn, mm -hmm. things to do. Mm -hmm. So we decided at the end of January when it was all over to breathe, <laughs> <laughs> take a break for a couple of months, and decide what we wanted to do next. Mm -hmm. And so we did some research to see what had been done if organizations had done one of these programs. Did they do any follow-up? Um, so many of them did. They did a nine-week, 23 things program, and then the next year did it again, and then the next year did it again. Um, so very short, um, you know, burst of um, information. And we thought that was cool. That was something good. But we decided to try and do something a little different with it, something we hadn't seen. I think I only knows one other place doing something more like this. I believe it was in Maryland, but I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to go with a um, do something different, an ongoing 23 things program. Um, meaning not just a short period of time, a block of things you do, and then it's done and over. This is a program where we do one thing per month that um, uh, people can go and look at the the lesson and do it. Um, and they for that one thing, they get one CE credit for completing it during that month. Um, they can work with other people on it, just like the uh, the longer the program we did something <coughs> each week. You have a whole month to do this thing, and we started this in April two thousand and nine, and we're still doing it. Actually, uh, so this has been going on for how many years has that been? I, this month is uh, thing 64. 60 something, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we had a few things. We've mixed up a little bit in there. But um, so this is our current ongoing program. Um, we announced it in April 2009. So the other one ended in January. So by April, we had this one arranged and ready to go. Um, the first thing was in May. So the first thing that, that they could do is May of 2009. Um, at the start, 47 people set up blogs and told us they were doing it. Only 18 of those 47 were from the first program. We got 29 new people to join in with this ongoing one. So that was something very interesting, I thought, that um, not everyone from the original one jumped in. It wasn't just those people. There was new people who maybe that time frame we did it, as like I said, October to January, maybe wasn't the best time if people were busy with conferences and <laughs> holidays and whatnot. Um, but with the new one, when we announced, hey, we're going to do an ongoing thing, once a month you can learn something. Once a month you can practice something. You have a whole month to work on it. We yeah, got 29 new people to join in. Um, we had them do a, pre a prerequisite where they had to watch the video and about the um, 23 or the – Seven, have, seven, seven and a half, half habits, habits of highly successful learners. And they have to set up their blog. And set up their blog. And they did that. Um, they do not have to do everything every month. They can see what the thing is for the upcoming month and decide to do it. If it's not something that they're interested in or something they don't think they can use or something they already know about and don't want to, they can just skip that month and see what comes up the next month. Um, it is not planned out ahead of time. Like the 23 Things program, you know, these are the 23 things I will learn in the next hour, many weeks. It's not that way. We Each month, um, one of us would come up with the um, item for that to learn about that month. There were four of us originally running the program. Now it's Michael and I running it. Um, so we take turns doing um, creating them. So each month, you just, you just have to wait and see what it was going to be. But you had the whole month to do it, so that was okay. You had plenty of time to figure it out. If it was something you wanted to do, did you have the time? whatever. Um, all the things are still left up on the page. You can always go back and do previous ones for your own learning and knowledge, but you only earn the CE credit if you did it during the month that it was first um, for. Yeah, and, and the idea behind that is we're trying to get we're trying to get multiple people to be doing all working on the same thing at the same time. Hence, that's why we say if you do it that month, you get the CE credit. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at numbers, how well that's working is 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 maybe questionable a little bit. But the idea is that we want to encourage 
as many people who are going to, to do a particular thing to do it at the same time. So they can work together. So they can work together, get some discussion going, things like that. We also have some people who are doing the things even though they don't actually earn CE credit from oh, us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Academic librarians, our CE credit is pretty much for public, public libraries. Yes. Uh, but we do have some academic librarians across the state who will do the yeah. things just because they want to learn how to do it. And yeah. they will participate even though they're not actually getting anything from us. They're just doing it for themselves. Yeah. The program is open to any... Nebraska library staff, um, whether you're a board member, trustee, actual staff person, um, and if you're an academic, special, public, whatever, um, everyone is um, welcome to do it. Although, um, if you want to do our things and you don't live in Nebraska, you can, oh, you're, yeah. you're free to do them. Well, we you can't I mean? give we you just can't credit. Give you credit. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, talk to your own people in your own state and they might be able to, but yeah. we can't do that. Um, in January of 2012, we moved the blog in-house. Um, the Library Commission was at the same time working on doing a WordPress install here for our own um, in-house blogs um, that we do. And so we brought, um, previous we were at um, Blogger. Blogger, yeah. Blogspot. Um, and it's still out there. The site is still out there. Later on in the presentation, we have the links for all of these as well. Um, but we brought it in-house. Um, and so we have the new website. looks like this. So this is the one we're currently on. Uh, all of the content and comments from the original blog was copied over into the new site for continuity's sake, so you can just go to this new blog, the new URL, and get everything going back to the beginning of when we started doing the ongoing program. Um, but the old site is still there in case people do have links to that one or we're um, linking out to it instead, um, but there is also information there saying we've moved over to here now. So we are just now at a new URL, um, and we added something new also right after we moved. Mm -hmm. So uh, about a year ago, so uh, this would have been January of 2012, uh, I started February. looking, well, uh, well, planned it in January 2012, oh, okay. started yeah. February. Okay, so in January 2012, um, for probably none of you have ever seen my office, but um, I, I might be the tech guy, but I've got books piled on the floor of books that I need to be reading and whatnot. I'm, I'm pointing over there like this is my office. This is actually yeah. Krista's office. Anyways, um... So, and I, a lot of these books have direct ties to libraries, technology, marketing, uh, whether, you know, directly or, or, or um, kind of um, uh, indirectly a little bit. So I started talking with our, uh, uh, Laura, our C person, our continuing education person, and I'm talking to Krista about Learning 2.0, and I thought, well, what if it's not just having a thing that you can do online each month, why not we also have a book thing uh, a book that you can read each month and then reflect upon in your blog and earn some CE credit. Now, the real reason I had to talk to Laura in this case was um, we have one CE credit for um, a, a technology thing, but the book might take you, you know, six, eight hours just to read, let alone then write a blog post to reflect on, where a, a web thing might take an hour or two and you're done. Mm -hmm. So um, what we've basically done is um, the, the number of CE credits in this case are, are flexible, kind of based on the length of the book. So usually two, sometimes three. Um, I, I have yet to do like a six or 700 page book. Uh, I don't want to intimidate people. I, I try to keep them to, you know, between 200 and 300 pages long. And so for, for a year now, Book Thing 12 just came out the other day here. We have had one book a month. Uh, ranging from uh, the, the January one here is the filter bubble about uh, so kind of one view of, of search technology that people uh, have thought about. Uh, we've done the Clue Train Manifesto. Um, the one I've already got scheduled for February is the Thank You Economy, which is a little more of a marketing sort of thing, but I think could have some really interesting applications to, to libraries. So we've um you know, we've we've integrated this in so now there are two things each month uh one is a book and one is kind of a, a web tool or some piece of technology mm -hmm. um that's available and um really we're the only ones doing this that i'm aware of this this mm -hmm. book thing there there really isn't um another one. and i will say too that this was inspired by um michael stevens who who you'll hear again chris will talk about in a little bit um at uh san jose state where um, he was having his students read books and report on them. And, and so uh, that's what gave me the idea to, to pull this into our program. Mm -hmm. So, and you may have noticed too across the previous versions of um, our, our banner there, uh, it's Carhenge. Um, well, I, Kristen, you, you take this. 
<laughs> well, you may have noticed, let me just give it, that there has been a theme to all of our um, blogs that we have done. Um, at the top of at our banners and all of them have been these pictures of these cars. And as I says, anybody know what this oh, is, okay. but you just gave it away. I gave it away. Um, has anybody out there seen this before? <laughs> Does anybody know where we were when we were taking all of these photos? Go ahead and type into the uh, question section of your uh, GoToWebinar interface. I know at least two people listening. Well, yeah, I know some people know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, it's there Nebraska. It's Nebraska. Good. Thanks, Thank Royce. <laughs> yes. This is in western Nebraska. It is a place called Carhenge, which is actually, and you can see it a little better here on, on this photo, um, <coughs> cars that have been arranged in the exact same locations and dimensions as the original Stonehenge in England. Um, it's all accurate to the same um, positions and everything there, and it's just car hinge. It's, an, um, it's a tourist attraction out in western Nebraska. And this is myself and a couple of other staff, Susan Nisley and Shannon White, who are actually a couple of the original um, creators of the program, worked on it, the original ones. Um, and so we just took that on as our theme for Nebraska. It was something that was um, different mm -hmm. and um, specific to us. So that's why you see all those cars um, at the top. We aren't all into cars, but we are all in, into Nebraska and <laughs> car hinge. So, so uh, we started our ongoing program, Nebraska Learners 2.0, in May of 2009, and we started out with gangbusters. It was great. We had all those libraries join up, um, blogs created right at the beginning, and people started doing their things, and we just kept putting up the posts every month, and as you can see from these statistics, um, you know, they went down. Um, over time, people, there are less things done. Um, no more new blogs were created. It was just the same people coming back and doing it, or even less and less every month. Uh, so our statistics were not very nice, and we were wondering, well, what did we do? Um, well, we realized we, need to, we dropped the ball. Uh, we put this out there. We announced the program. We said we're going to do it. It's going to be there. And um, we assumed, because of such a great um, number of people jumping on board right away and how everyone said, we want to continue this, we want to keep doing something, that they would keep doing it. Um, that didn't work yeah. out in real life. Um, they needed to be reminded that this program was still out there, and that was something we fought, we forgot about, was the ongoing promotion. Not just the initial pro promotion, but the ongoing. So we decided we needed to step back and redo how we were going to promote and support this program. So now we, we, um, we do blog posts every month for the new ones. We post on Twitter. We have a Facebook page now. I'm going to show you all this. We have mailing lists in the state where we mail out every month and announce that these are coming up. And we are committed to doing each other's things. At the original, as I said, there was four of us on the team. And we tried to, and it didn't work out every month, but we did attempt to try and actually support each other's things that came up with by actually us doing them as well, um, if we had the time to do it. Um, and um, it, it helped, definitely. Um, so here we have. So what we do is, as a thing, as each month's things uh, get posted, become available. Um, sometimes it's it, we 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 aim for the first of the month or the first weekday of the month, uh, or well, not even the first first day of the month, because you know in WordPress blog or whatever you can schedule your posts out. Um, success varies, <laughs> but usually we're within the first week. Um, you know, holidays. So. In this case, um, I was here last week, so the book thing uh, got put up on the first. Um, the thing which Krista is doing this month will be up uh, later today uh, because she was out last week. She's okay by the end of the week. Um, so we do that. Once both things are up, then we do several things to do the promotion. One is on the Encompass blog, which is the blog for the Library Commission, we do uh, put up a post giving kind of a brief description and links to the new things each month, try to entice people to participate. So this was the one for December uh, that went up. So we had uh, Tagzito, I guess is how you say that, and then the book was, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Word Clouds, uh, yeah. pretty cool Word Clouds service. And then the book thing for December was Alone Together by uh, Sherry Turkle, a great book, highly recommend it. Um, this text also goes out to our statewide mailing list. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we do that. So we have templates set up for this stuff. We kind of pop in the new information, and usually when it's my turn to send this out, I, I get most of the new information right. Um, <laughs> sometimes I forget to change March to April and things like that, but, you know, uh, I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Um, then what also what we'll do is uh, on our uh, commission news uh, Twitter account, uh, the things will go out, and basically that's just a link back to the blog post saying, hey, uh, the new thing is out, here is what we're talking about, go ahead and do that, one.usa.gov. That's what 
um, the Twitter does shortener. Does shortener. Okay, it. sorry, I I, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm gonna have to look into that. Okay, and that's because um, we're a government site, because state agency. So they use a shortener for. Oh, interesting. Okay, hadn't noticed that. Um, and then Nebraska Lawyers 2.0 also has a Facebook page uh, that Krista pretty much runs. Uh, in this case, she's more the Facebook person than I am. And uh, so we link to the blog posts there saying, hey, the new things are out. Uh, like us, we have 56 likes as of today. Is this, is yeah, this, this is this morning. Screenshot? Yep. Okay. Um, I did this. Two so Facebook.com slash The Basket Learns. Uh, anybody can uh, uh, do that. Yep, so, so if you're a if you if you um, are a big Facebook user, this is how you can also learn about what the upcoming thing will be for the next month. Sure. So let's look at our revised statistics <laughs> a, as we go through here, and you'll notice the scale from the last one has changed. Um, the high number there is eight. Uh, what was thing forty? We should go back and look that up. <laughs> well, that, uh, that, popular, that one was yeah. pretty popular. Um, what we can say successfully is that each month, well, yeah, A, our promotions worked. Yes. Okay. Um, B, every month we have had at least one person do one of the things, whether it was just the thing or a year ago when we started book thing. For example, in December, uh, we, we just got, a, got the numbers in. One person read the book. Nobody did, did the thing. Uh, but, you know, it's December. Too. And so this is also, I'm actually, you know, impressed. This is also statistics of people who actually um, went onto our blog and reported, yes, I did the thing for the month. And as everyone knows, when you do these kind of open programs, just because um, the number of people that tell you they're doing it is not the same as the number of people that are doing it. Right. I've had people say, oh, yeah, that was a cool thing, and I did it. And I was like, well, that's nice. You could have told us. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, statistics-wise, um, we know this means in reality there are more people than that actually looking at it and possibly using it. Right. So the fact that we're hearing from at least one person every month and sometimes more is great. Um, and this is awesome statistics. They actually go up and down. They're not flatlining like they were before we really put more into the um, regular uh, monthly promotion of the program. Right. And if you're looking at these numbers and going, ooh, you had one person do it or two, keep in mind a couple of things. One, we're Nebraska. We're not exactly the most populous state right. in the country. Uh, you know, we, 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 we have a low-level population, so the number of librarians that might participate is going to be significantly lower than a lot of other states, you know, not California or New York, for example. Um, two, we basically have no travel budget anymore. So um, you're participating in this show. This is one of the ways we try to get it out. And so if we have, you know, four of you on the line right now, it's actually, I think, about six. Yeah. Um, that may not seem like a lot, but then we record it and we put it out there, and at least twice as many people watch it. We do have the statistics on that, yes. And, and that. so the, the kind of return on investment for the amount of time we put in, you know, Chris and I might spend a total of an hour putting together the lesson for the month, and if three people do it, you know, we've just um, seem to have lost our audio. So I'm going to vamp here for a moment. Um, Attempting to reconnect now. Don't know what to do. Connection lost. Connection lost. Please check your network connection. The internet has. Uh, okay. Hello. Can anybody hear us? If you can hear us. Um, okay. Network connection. Can you hear us now? Spotty, Roy says. Okay. okay. Can, oh, now, I can, now I can. Okay. All right. It looks like we're back. Yes, sorry. sorry. We briefly apparently lost our in, our connection completely <laughs> to, um, to, the, to the, okay. uh, the so, go to webinar. Yeah. So let okay. me back up a sentence. Um, we're talking about low population in Nebraska. The other one is return on investment. Um, the amount of time that Krista and or I spend on this each month compared to the number of people who do it we might spend an hour if two or three people complete it. It was we, we still view it was an hour well spent. Yes, we would like bigger numbers, but as long as we're getting somebody, we feel like the time we're putting into it is actually well worth it. And and we're getting something out there instead of people going, Hey, what has the commission done for us lately? Now it's we've done this for you. You need to now you need to participate. So our we we started this program 
our uh, promotion um, stunk. Yes, we admit that. We did a bad job. We dropped the ball. We picked back up, and we went forward. And now that we've been actually promoting it properly, this it's going great. Um, so that's one thing lesson learned about this program is that you do have to. It is need does need ongoing maintenance, constant, but not constant maintenance. We're talking the end of a month. We work on trading the thing for the next month. Beginning of the month, we get it promoted out, and then you just sit back and wait and see who does it, comment back and forth on them. Um, it is not. Now, as I said, there's two of us doing it um, when we originally had four people doing it. It's been pretty good. Not a problem to um, keep up with it, really. Um, we've yeah. also brought in uh, some guest bloggers a couple of times. We started doing that, trying to encourage other staff um, from libraries in the state to, to um, share things they've learned or, mm -hmm. or new tools they found that they want to. So we've gotten, so we've reached out to do that kind of thing as and, well. And if any commission staff ever wants to come to one of our doors and say, hey, I want to write next, next <laughs> month's thing, we'll We're let you. To do that. <laughs> In fact, we have done that once or twice. Yes. Yeah. So. so. So it's going great. Now, this is what we've been doing as an ongoing program, and as we said, it's our current one. But we're not the only ones doing ongoing. As I said, um, there were other ones out there. The original program that they did at Charlotte Mecklenburg actually did a second run of it. They called it Learning 2.1, Explore, Discover, Play, where they just went through and did um, they did a continuation of the original one. Um, some of the original items were on there, tossed in some updating of some new things. So they did a whole second running through of it, and you can find their information on their site out there as well if you want to. And some other people have kind of taken it and um, modified it for other purposes. Uh, there's another uh, event called the 23 Things for Professional Development, which is actually run by some librarians in Cambridge, England, uh, where they've done it, um, they did it in 2000. 10 and 2011 11, 11 and, and 12. 12. They yeah. did, they've done two runs of this now, where things are specifically geared toward librarians doing professional development. How to do your resume, how to get yourself out there, um, how to not just random things like how to use Twitter and how to use um, Flickr, um, but things specifically geared toward professional development. Uh, we actually jumped in on this in the first one. We actually took a break from doing a thing a month and had our, our people join this one. And I believe we had 15, 16 yeah. of our staff complete completely there. Their 23 Things program, earning them another 15 continuing education credits. Uh, so that's another way that they've just taken the original 23 Things program and tweaked it for a different purpose. And this is this was actually a uh, worldwide event. This one um, they invited. It was not specific to their library or their group of people in England. It was open to anyone in the world who wanted to participate. And they've done that twice now. So that was really amazing, being able to see people all over the world participating in this same program and learning together. Um, another program done, kind of going the opposite direction, is at Boston Public Library. They are doing a thing called Learning for Life Online, which is actually a program run particularly specifically for their patrons. So um, they do a new thing, a self-guided program, just like the traditional 23 Things program. Um, and it's an ongoing thing, though. It does not have a limited time frame. Um, I think it's every month. It's maybe? Yeah, it's Jennifer Korber, a friend of ours at Boston Public, who's running it. It, it is... Um, uh, we talked about kind of the lack of promotion that we were doing. We saw the numbers drop. They have kind of intentionally not really promoted it all that much. She has presented about it. She, you know, she knows we talk about it, things like that. Um, so they, they do have kind of a low level of participation by the general public at this time. But that's kind of intentional because as far as we know, nobody else has ever tried to do this for the public before. Mm -hmm. It's so mostly been for staff. It's mostly yeah. been for staff where you have kind of a... Uh, a, a more a higher level of control over how people to participate and when they participate when it's staff as opposed to the public. So she's still working on it. You mm -hmm. can follow it. We'll supply she's the got URL. New going up. She's got they've got a Facebook um, page where they put the new things up every time. And we've used some of her things, and I think she's used some of our things. Mm -hmm. So we kind of cross pollinate uh, in, in that way also. And another new thing that I just learned about this past fall, and these are not the only programs out there, these are just a few we're highlighting, 17 Things to Soak Up. This is where a school actually did this for their staff at um, high school. This is um, Carrie Turner, who's from Westside High School up in Omaha, um, did this for her staff. She had seen another school, uh, another person, uh, a presentation of another school that had done this for their staff. Um, where they bring it down to even fewer, 17 things, um, not even 23, um, so the teachers wouldn't be so overwhelmed <laughs> by it. Um, and they did it for the high school staff. 
to try and get that same reason um, as we were doing it, to get them up to speed on all these new technologies out there. Um, so they did a school-based one. And the website for it is available for you to go and look at and see how they tweaked it for the teachers at the school. So this is something not for librarians and not for users, but for teachers at a school. So this is just another um, example of how it's been done out there. And like I said, this is not the only ones out there. There's just a few that we know of um, that we're highlighting just to show that there it is being done. It is being done successfully, and a lot of people are still um, coming up with new ways to use this format of learning, these small bits of information, small lessons. Um, once a week, you learn something new to try and just get yourself up to speed and get into that um, mode of learning. Now, there has not been a lot of research done. These things have been going on for years. I said the one in Charlotte, Mecklenburg is what, 2006, Six, the original. Yeah. Not a lot of research has been done yet on the topic, but it is starting to be done. Uh, Helen herself did a survey, actually, in 2009. Um, where she actually saw, went back to see to contact the program coordinators at uh, who had done this, and she found um, 62 programs. August 2008, she did a survey. That's when it was, and 62 programs that had been done using her 23 Things program uh, um, format that she had come up with, and just asked them how it went. And there was some really good research and information she got out of this survey. Now, this is re 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 surveying the people running the programs, not necessarily the people particip not the people participating in the programs. Um, and there are four main top outcomes that she learned from this. Um, increased knowledge and comfort level with social media was what they, they felt they had in any sort of 2.0 tools. Um, increased confidence in one's own, own ability um, as a competent learner. That goes along with the seven and a half habits of um, taking ownership of your learning, your own personal learning. Um, team building among coworkers. What well, we talked about that during that one month when we're doing a thing, that's when you get the credit because hopefully you'll communicate with other people and um, you'll work together. We, I know that when we did it here in our house, we had staff running around from office to office <laughs> saying, someone so help me figure this out. And we were like, great, go keep doing that, work together. Um, and um, it, it, um, as a result of having this new learning, there were new and improved, this is back, going back to Helen's research, new and improved enhancements to customer services. So it did affect how the people, the staff who took these, pro took these programs um, did their work in the end. Um, Something that also we mentioned here at the commission, active management participation was a key defining factor in creating a successful learning program. You can't just go out and say, I'm the web person, I'm the learning person, I'm just going to create this. You need to talk to the people in charge, make sure they are either participating or definitely encouraging their staff. Make sure your people are on board with the fact that um, online, not online, life, lifelong learning is important, personal professional development is important, we all know that that's true, but having the actual active management participation was key to this being a success. Can I share a story mm -hmm. here? Um, a, a, a library I will not name uh, that um, was going to participate in one of these. I won't even say if it was ours or not, so we won't narrow it down too much. <laughs> um, and the management said, you know, staff, please go ahead and do this. Please participate. We'd like you to do that. Um, but then two things happened. One, they didn't really give them any work time in which to do it. But then rules were also that you aren't supposed to be doing work if you're not actually on work time. So they then discouraged them also from doing it from home because it was a work-supported thing. So, it, yeah, it kind of caused this, we're not going to give you work time, but please don't do work because we consider this work, please don't do it from home either. Like they don't, this library doesn't want people checking work email from home. It, it's kind of against the rules. You're supposed to be working when you work. Um, so we, there was very um, little participation from that library in the end, despite the support being kind of officially given. So just kind of watch for things like that. You know, if, if management is going to support it, you really do need to support it. And, and not kind of create those problems mm -hmm. and not give people work time to do it. And we've also had stories from other libraries um, where the management was totally on board with it. And oh, is yes. That, um, was it Pam? Bonson? Pam, yes. yes. Um, I, I can't remember yeah. what library she had. <laughs> ah. Um, who she was on board, she did it, she did all the things as well. So not just encouraging, but also doing it themselves. So um, having your supervisors, your staff, your director, whoever's, you know, 
above um, definitely be involved made a difference. And that's what Helen learned from her study and what we've learned anecdotally from our own, as, uh -huh. as Michael was just saying. Um, also, um, Michael Stevens, who we mentioned earlier, he has finally he started doing some research recently. He spent some time in Australia, actually, learning about the effect of Learning 2.0 programs in Australian public libraries. Um, how have they been doing it there? He did. He worked with um, libraries there and did a national um, uh, web-based survey for participants in the program. So this is different from what Helen did. She talked to the people who ran the programs, like us. Um, uh, we weren't in that particular study because we hadn't done ours yet that she did, but that's who the type of people she talked to. The one that Michael Stevens has done, he actually did a web survey of the participants themselves to asking them, how did this affect you? What was this like? Um, the national survey had 384 people respond, um, and they came up with a lot of the same exact things that Helen's um, survey came up with from the coordinator side that increased confidence, um, moved to using emerging technologies as part of library service. So just by doing this separate program that you think is just something they were doing for themselves to learn something, they actually took it and then put it into the library's programs, became part of the library services. So it really helped improve and increase that. Um, in a lot of the things that we um, do, we actually ask in our blog posts, how could you use this in the library? Can you see a way of using this tool to provide library services? And some people say yes and talk about how they could, and some people say no. I mean, it can be either way. That's why we like the discussion. But we do get them to think about this isn't just for you. It can be, and that's sometimes a good way to start it. Use it yourself personally and then transfer it into how can I get use this for um, the library as well. So he's done some great research and his art. He's got an article. His PDF of his article is available for free if ever anyone wants to read the entire um, results of what he did. Um, he also has just recently been awarded a grant to explore it in the United States. So he is now currently working on this. Um, don't know where he's at yet. He's still in the midst of the study at the moment, where he's now been given a grant to study it in um, in our country to see how it's going here. Now that he's got his basis in Australia, he's um, going to be working on that. So definitely be interested to see if things turn out the same way here as we have thought they have heard, as Helen Bowers' um, research um, showed. So he's going to use... Um, Hopefully something soon we'll yeah. be hearing. We keep waiting for that, that. For, for that phone call from Michael <laughs> saying, I'm okay, I'm, I'm putting my survey together because yeah. we're, we're, we really want to answer his questions. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, we've done this for a while now. So, um, any questions? Um, we haven't seen anything come up as we've been talking. We're about to the end of our session here. Anybody have any comments, questions you want to ask about anything that we've um, talked about, any of the programs we've done, um, any of the programs that we told you about? You can use the questions section of your interface to ask questions if you want to, or if you have a microphone, just let us know and I can unmute you. Can you see me? Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, how do you choose your topics? One of our, yes, ask how do you choose? <sighs> oh, um, well, <laughs> do you want me to go first? Question. Um, sure. Okay. It depends. I, I, well, yeah, the answer is it depends. Um, I, I kind of align to every time Kristen and I talk about doing this show, um, people are always like, how do you come up with something to do every single week? Um, so now we're getting the question is, is, how do you come up with something to do every single month? Um, I do do the book thing every month. And um, basically, I literally look at my bookshelves and the pile of books on my floor behind my desk and say, okay, what, what book do I think would be interesting? Now, um, we've done some newer books. We've done some older books. Mm -hmm. um, trying to mix it I, up. I kind of want them to be available in paperback, uh, but sometimes there's just a new book that's really, really great. I think everybody should read, so we try to do that. Um, as for the, the technology things, that varies. Sometimes we're coming up with them at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I actually just started writing February's this morning because I got an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at uh, just kind of going through some bookmarks and some things. I, As I'm surfing, I go, oh, this might make a good thing, and usually nothing comes of a lot of it. But um, this morning um, I was taking a photo for a time-lapse video that I'm going to be creating for a completely different project. And I asked, I asked myself, well, are there any online services that will allow you to create time-lapse videos? In other words, nothing you have to download and install. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found one, and I went, oh, this is cool. And so that's going to be February's thing is mm -hmm. how to create time-lapse videos. So 
B, it's, always, it's kind of planning ahead and spur of the moment all at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's it's varies. Sometimes you, we just as you know, you're always seeing these new things come up. That oh, here's a cool new tool. You know, if you follow any of these kind of techie blogs, or even just library blogs and sites or anything out there, things are there are always new things coming up, and you just gotta if you're in the middle of running one of these programs, look at them and say, could this be something we could make a lesson out of? Could this do do that? Sometimes we look at other sites as well, like the um. The Boston one and the um, Helen Blowers one and anyone else doing it and borrow from them. Like as Michael said, most of these just like ours, it's all Creative Commons licensed. The ones we've come across, so we can borrow and tweak. Um, we do let them know um, and do give them credit where credits due. Um, but sometimes it's just like that, looking around and um, seeing what else, what other places have done in these kind of programs, or just coming across something and just you know saving a little draft post in the WordPress for future use. <laughs> um, we have a bunch of those as well. Yeah, there was. A, I was looking at one draft this morning, going, "What is this?" I mean, I could, I, I created the draft. I don't even remember what it was. I created it months ago. But you know, um, I mean, we've done everything from Flickr to. Uh, mm -hmm online chat to Ubuntu the operating system. I mean And a lot of things too as just that you just mentioned Flickr. Um we've been doing this one since two thousand nine and we have our previous ones. We've also done some updates. So we've mm. redone some um, which isn't necessarily a, just a rehash, but these products that people have been using for a long time, they get updated, they get changed. So you've done some, let's go back and look at how Flickr is now if you want to use it. Because when we did our thing two years ago, it ran differently. So we've done some updates as well. So we've done the same thing repeatedly just to give a newer um, version. And we've done, you know, go check your privacy settings and all these different services. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it's, and we're always yeah. taking suggestions. Um, yes, we've so, had some suggestions you know. from staff, from people here who say, here's something that might be good, and we've taken that on as well. Yeah. So it comes from everywhere. So... So uh, links, and we will put these in the show notes and whatever, yes. so you don't need to write these all down right now. But um, if you want to see the original staff program, mm -hmm. uh, our original statewide program, uh, the first version of the ongoing, which has been completely supplanted by the second version, the Nebraska.gov mm -hmm. version. So actually, the, the if you go to the Nebraska.gov one, that includes everything that's in the Blogspot one from before that. We just imported everything in and said, but we've moved it over here. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought that in-house. So, so all of this is available if you want to kind of watch the progression of the programs. Um, and then here are some links to some of the other programs that we mentioned, the two versions from Charlotte Mecklenburg. Uh, the professional development one. I, I gotta say, I really like the professional development mm -hmm. one. I, I really kind of got into it with the folks that created that um, because we pulled in Nebraska, and I, I think I ended up the first time around creating the completion certificates for everybody mm -hmm. across the world who completed them uh, because it was just a really different angle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we try to say, okay, here's something you may use, but how might you use it for your library? This was really, this is for you as a librarian mm -hmm. uh, point of view. So uh, if you're really looking for a different one, that would be one. I would say check out, definitely. Uh, the Boston Public one, the 17 Things to Soak Up, so all those links are there. And I believe on the next slide is uh, the links to the research that Kristen was talking about. Mm -hmm. So, again, and, don't try to write all these down. We'll put them in the show notes. And that will be and, the URL where they will be in the delicious account there. At the bottom there, yep. Yeah. So, They're not there yet, but they will be as soon as they get them done. <laughs> Later today. <laughs> so, uh, I think that's that's about it. Yeah, uh, I mean, it. really... Uh, I would say if you can, if you have one available, participate. Um, I mean, you know, for those of you in Nebraska, please join in. Uh, for those of you not in Nebraska, uh, you're welcome to follow along. Do them anyways because it will be good for you. Um, have your CE person talk to our CE person, and maybe you can get CE credit for, from your uh, state or organization. Uh, we, we just can only give it to Nebraska librarians. Mm -hmm. I want to stress that. Um, or if you are not uh, here in Nebraska, start your own program. Royce, I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, or at least I'm looking at your name on the screen. Uh, I think uh, doing one for uh, university staff might be mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Uh, I, I I don't know of one being done by academics. Oh, they're sure out they're. there, um, but uh, I, know I don't know there one off the top so of There are so many head. of these programs. I'm sure there are. Yeah. <laughs> and Roy um, says that was the reason he's here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helen Blowers has in her um, delicious links tons of She just tracks every time new ones come up, so she's got a lot. Um, um, if you look from her website, she has links to where she's tracking, where she's got hundreds and hundreds of different anything that is vaguely a um, 23 Things type okay. program. So does anybody have any um, last minute questions, comments, anything you want to know more about from us? And, and Royce will say if you do this, you know, if steal liberally, just give us credit. That, that's all we ask, really. <laughs>
Of course. Thank you. <laughs> Well, right. nothing's come in. You can also, yeah, of course, feel, um, feel free to contact us if you do want to know a little more about how we did anything particular part about it. Um, our um, emails are right there. Um, and uh, we'll definitely be willing to share with you uh, how all this uh, worked out for us. So that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. Um, thank you very much for attending. I... Um, there we go. And it was recorded, uh, except for that little bit in the middle where we lost connection, but it should all be here. Um, and the recording will be up shortly. Um, the, I hope you'll join us next week when our episode is on internships, uh, Cultivating Nebraska's Future Librarians, um, where uh, we have our 21st Century Librarian Internship Grant Program here in Nebraska. So if you're interested in what we've been doing here to get new librarians into the field, um, definitely um, check in with next week's show. And um, as we just mentioned that Nebraska Learns 2.0 is, and Compass Live is also on Facebook. So um, if you do want to follow us on there and see what kind of things um, we are doing here, every week when we have a new show coming up, we tell us uh, tell you what will be coming up. We remind you that you can join us right now to join to do it when the um, recordings are done, and we announce them on the web page here on the Facebook page as well. So if you are a big Facebook user, feel free to um, like us on Facebook. So other than that. Okay. Thank you very much for attending, and we will see you uh, next week on Encompass Live. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.